Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media. As you know, on a standard headphone configuration, we have two ears and we have two channels. We have left and right. So making a pan between the left and right is very, very simple to do. Today we're going to be tackling something a little bit more difficult, creating the illusion of panning forward and backward and putting the listener into the space. Let's hop into the studio and do some exploration. Awesome guys, so today we're going to be covering how to pan forward and backward in Ableton or at least create the illusion of doing so. We already know that we have a left and right pan. If we load up a synth here in Ableton, we have a default pan which is essentially left and right. And that makes sense because we have two ears here, left ear, right ear. We have a left speaker, a right speaker, and when we pan, we turn the left speaker down or the right speaker down, etc. Ableton actually has a essentially a stereo balancing tool. It's not a real pan pot, if you will. I did a video on that. If you're interested in clicking on that video, you can click on the link above me right now and check that video out. But that's irrelevant here. A pan typically is between the left and the right ear because we have two ears unless you're a mutant or you're bad at hearing and you only have one ear you only have two ears and a stereo system typically is between the left and the right ear so it just makes sense that we have a left and right pan uh, we have new systems coming out now like the Dolby Atmos system which are four to one or seven to one systems which are essentially seven speakers surrounding uh, one sub or uh, four speakers surrounding and one sub where you have one speaker here, one speaker there, one speaker to the left behind you, one speaker to the right behind you, and a sub in the middle. Systems like that are on the rise, but we can't make uh, the most use of that because we only have two ears, and for headphone users and things like that, um, you can only use two ears because we only have two ears, two speakers, for headphones. So how then do we create a sense of depth that you may hear in a lot of different things? To do this we use something called binaural audio. People have been doing this for years on end now. Um, there's this great video online that a lot of people really enjoy and it's very kind of trippy in a way. It's called uh, Virtual Haircut and essentially how they made that video is they take a microphone, well two microphones actually, and they put them uh, to the left and the right and they record whatever scene is going on in a room and essentially whenever uh, this ear hears um, something it's going to record it and then it's going to be played back on this ear and because this microphone is pointing in the same direction as this ear is we're going to hear that back directly especially on headphones where it works even better and people have gone so far as to make uh, fake ears and fake heads and then put microphones in them to kind of recreate the effect perfectly and you get these really awesome uh, it's called binaural um, virtual uh, experiences I guess you'd call them and those are really awesome but the thing about that is that we can only utilize them by re-recording uh, something that we've already heard or we're playing in a room that's no good for something like music production where we're designing a synthesizer or a lead or something of that nature in Serum or another device and we want to create that forward and backward in a room effect um, without you know re-recording into two microphones like that so how do we get this effect to create this effect we have to understand why binaural audio works so our ears we have two ears in theory we'd only be able to hear uh, one thing on each side we'd be able to hear what's on our right and what's on our left directly but that's not how we work our ears actually uh, can detect the difference between this ear and this ear and the minute difference in in delay between this ear and this ear can create a sense of depth for our brain to process and kind of pinpoint where in the room that the sound came from for an example if we have a sound to our left our left ear is going to hear it and then a few milliseconds later the sound is going to bounce around our face and hit our other ear. It's going to have to curl back around in and that of course takes time. This is how our brain works. It, it, it can hear the difference in time between this ear and this ear and it can calculate exactly where the sound came from. And the shape of our ear actually helps that because then it can decide which direction it came from as well. And we can kind of uh, trick our ears into believing this by utilizing a few functions that we're going to learn today. So the first of which, I actually created a device. It's on my desktop. I'm going to be putting it up for free download. Now this isn't a catch-all device or a forward pan um, you, that you want to use on everything. It's just a proof of concept that I've made that can kind of help you understand the, the effects and the processing that you can use to create that sense of artificial depth that you want in your music. 
So uh, make sure you have your headphones on if you haven't already put them on or aren't using them. And you're going to be able to hear exactly what this device does. Um, we're going to be going through what this device does uh, momentarily. But first, let's actually give this a listen. Here is the device completely off. As you can see, this knob is off. Standardized saw wave. Let me turn that down just a tad. Now, when we start turning this BF knob, which is backwards forwards knob, you can hear that the sound is going to start going backwards. Or at least create the effect of going backwards. I also have an L and R knob here, so you can just have all of your panning in one place. So how do we achieve this effect? And you might be wondering exactly how this was done. Let's actually go into these mappings to take a closer look at how this works. So we have the BF knob here, and as you can see, it's mapped. There's three mappings here, aside from the LR, which is essentially a basic panoramic. And these knobs are mapped to three different devices here. Let's go through these uh, one by one. So the auto filter. The auto filter is creating a sense of depth via uh, frequency difference. Essentially, if you've ever been to a show or a club or even like a house party, and you have a sub bass in a room, and um, you open the door up and it floods in with like high frequencies like and you close the door and they're all faded out and you just get a that's because low frequencies travel um, in longer wavelengths and you can hear them from farther away they can also travel through uh, thicker mediums the air is a medium uh, that's why you can't hear things in space the oxygen in the air is a medium for sound to travel through and when it hits the wall it can slow down enough to where it can completely stop. A small wavelength like a high frequency, and as you know, frequencies uh, dictate the pitch of a sound. The, the closer the wavelength is together, the harder it is to penetrate through thicker mediums. A wall is so thick, in fact, that the only thing that can penetrate through it is a super, super thick waveform with very, very wide wavelengths. And that's why we can hear sub-bass through a wall. Now, what does this have to do with depth? Now, because of this rule, even air has a partial, it, it kills off over time. It degrades the sound over time because of distance. And long wavelengths actually travel farther. That's why you hear things like big boats and stuff like that have a very deep groaning horn because you can hear them from farther away and it travels farther without uh, dissipating into the air. Higher frequencies you hear, but then they fade off when you start getting farther and farther away. It's also the reason why if you're ever at a festival or something like that, as you start to walk away, the only thing you can hear is the kick drum. And as you get closer, you can hear the higher frequencies. We can kind of trick our ears into believing this sense of distance uh, via a auto filter here. As you can see, this knob is controlling a slight low pass filter here. It's kind of curling the top off of that wave. Now this is kind of a softer, more subtle approach to doing it. You can actually do a super, super hard cut, and that's going to even create a further distance away from you. So that's the first element to this, is just modulating that low pass frequency there, which is creating that false sense of depth that we get from higher frequencies being removed. And it sounds like only lower frequencies are getting to us, meaning that it must be farther away. Next thing we have is a phaser, which is kind of playing off of that idea of having delay between the two ears. Let's actually mute the filter and let's mute the reverb here. And we can kind of get the gist of what this is doing um, to the sound. So this is actually modulating, as you can see, the dry wet of this phaser here. And it kind of completely changed the tonality of the sound. So we've covered the distance, which is the high and low frequencies. We've covered the, um, the Haas effect between the two ears and why we can hear things like that um, and how we can perceive that. The only thing left to do is to create a false sense of space, which we can do with reverb. Now reverb, impartial to a lot of people's belief, does not actually create size, it creates space. A good rule of thumb with creating depth and mixing in general is contrast. If every element in your track has a ton of reverb, they say nothing has, to, has any reverb at all because you have no contrast. But when you have a ton of reverb on one element and you have none on another, the one with no reverb is going to poke through and be obviously closer to you. So we're going to play off of that here. Um, we just have a reverb with a high cut. It's just doing a low reverb similar idea to the auto filter here and we're just doing a basic uh, dry wet automation on that reverb here let's mute everything here 
and essentially it's just um, kind of creating that effect of space. So we have reverb, we have phaser, and we have an auto filter, and together we can actually create that sense of false space or depth. Now this is not a go-to, uh, like I said before, it's not a go-to pan. Um, you're going to want to play with these settings on everything you do, but just keep in mind these three main elements to that effect. Um, we're going to play with one more idea here. Um, it's called the Haas effect. And we're actually going to load in a synth. Let's load in Serum again. And what we can do actually is literally create that effect that I was talking about earlier between the two ears here. What I'm going to do is make something super plucky just so we can kind of get the idea here. I'm going to make a quick pluck synth. And I loaded a simple delay onto this channel as well. What we're going to do is we're going to set the delay time to 1 and we're going to set the time or the sync to time instead. And we're going to actually drag these down. And I want this one to be 1 millisecond so it has virtually no delay at all. And I want this one to be at 10. Now if we set the dry wet all the way up so it's affecting everything, you notice that the right ear is now hearing the same sound 10 milliseconds after that left ear is. So we're going to get an effect of having the sound approaching from the left side. And as you can hear, our ears kind of trick our brain into believing that. That sound sounds like it's coming from the left hand side, does it not? And the more delay we add, the further that effect goes. And then, of course, we can revert that or invert that. So we have a sound coming from our right now. Just small ideas that you can play with, the basic fundamentals of creating depth within your song and creating that uh, forward and backward pan. I hope you found this video insightful. If you did, give it a like. If, it di if you didn't, give it a dislike and let me know why in the comments below and leave any future suggestions for videos in the comments below. Um, I am Julian. I make a video every Wednesday and Friday, two videos a week. If you're interested in merchandise for my channel, I just recently launched my merchandise store and you can go check that out on the link above me right now. I am Julian of Julian Gray Media, and until next time, I will talk to you later. Oh yeah, if you want this uh, this pan tool, I forgot to mention, go pick it up in the description below. All right, see you guys.